Let's get this shot. Wow. So pretty. Do you see the lines there, Kai Hong? I got the lines. Together we made lines. Oh. Oh, yes. And I go on an angle now. Still the lines are there. Hey everybody, what's going on? We are back talking about two lenses for the FE mount. You Sony folks out there who want something a little bit less expensive, lightweight, but performs beautifully. Here we are with Tamron with their new 24 f2.8 and 35 f2.8. I do want to let you guys know that we are not sponsored or paid for by anybody for this review. My thoughts and my thoughts only. Let's talk about the lenses. All right, so my weapon of choice today is the all-new Sony a7R IV, my favorite Sony camera today, because I want to see with 61 megapixels how it performs with these lenses. You know, because when you get to that high resolution, not all re uh, lenses resolve as good as others. Besides, let's see what Tamron's got anyway, right? We want to push to the limits. Anyway, so let's talk about the lenses. Now, my favorite zoom lens of last year was the Tamron 1728. Love that lens, lightweight, great for gimbal users or video users. Came in half the price as the GM, but performed pretty much the same. Now, the 24 f2.8, which I have on this camera first, which will be the one I'll be talking about right now, has that same build quality. Now, Tamron isn't putting all that R&D money into the outside of the lens. They're putting it into the glass and how it works. I mean, look, it's like the 1728. The build quality is exactly the same. Is it going to blow your socks off? No, but it does the job. It's kind of a lens that if you're a working photographer, you can bang this around. You're not going to worry about scratching your lens, you know, at least the outside of it. You always want to protect the glass, but the outside of it, it's meant to be a little bit more robust, a little bit more wear and tear. Besides that though, it's light. Now, the 24 f2.8 is actually a little heavier than the 35 f2.8. I think it's coming in about uh, 7.6 ounces uh, for the 24 and 7.4 ounces for the 35. These are very light lenses. And on the Sony a7R IV with the battery grip, it's a very welcome addition. Not like this camera's heavy, it's not. It's very, very light. But this combination feels really good in the hand. Now, let's talk about performance. How does it stack up with a 61 megapixel sensor on this camera? And that's where it's a little hit and miss. I think this, this lens really is designed to go at that 40 some megapixel range. It, I mean, the images look good at 61 megapixels, but you do see that there's a little bit of that, it's at its maximum ability for resolving power. Now that's not to say that you're going to lose out, you're not. For the most part, a lot of us are using our images for social media and Facebook and Instagram, which is all compressed anyway. Even the images you're watching here on the YouTube, they're all compressed. You're not seeing the full resol resolving power of this camera and this lens. So it's not a deal breaker. It's just something that you need to take note of. But one of the great attributes of this lens is actually the close focusing. You have one to two macro on this. So you can get those really beautiful bokeh on your subject, close up focusing on it, I mean, that's the one thing that Tamron's really done well with the 35 to 24 on these, is they got that close focusing down. No issues at all with that. Besides that though, I think this is gonna be a great lens for a lot of videographers out there, especially if you want a fixed lens, if you're a vlogger, and you just wanna hold this out there and just start talking to yourself or talking to whoever is on the other side of it. You have an imaginary friend, some of you do, some of you don't, I do. Um, it's great for that. You're gonna, it's, it's a comfortable angle, you're not, it's, the weight is good, no issues at all. If you want to put this on a gimbal, you're going to love it on a gimbal. It's very, very light. So done with the 24, let's talk about the 35. And like that, the 35 is on it. Now it might look exactly the same because it is exactly the same size. 2.5 inches or 61 millimeters in length. It's a very short lens, very stout lens, but again, it's a 2.8, so you don't need a lot of elements inside of this to perform. As you make it a faster lens, like a f2, f1.4, 1.8, the lenses get a little bit larger. Anyway, the weight of the 35 right now is actually lighter, as I mentioned, than the 24. It comes in at 7.4 ounces versus 7.6 ounces. You're not gonna notice a difference, but I have to tell you because that's on the spec sheet. Performance-wise, is exactly the same as the 24. It's sharp, everything looks well, the colors are great. It's got the same Tamron quality that you love. If you love the 1728, you're gonna like this lens. Now, let's talk about the performance with the Sony cameras because this is a third-party lens, right? This is where it's a little different. Now, I did find myself noticing a little bit of a lag in terms of focusing. It's not slow. It's just, just like a fraction of a millisecond 
difference. You're gonna notice it. It's not a deal breaker, but it is something to take note of. Now, eye focusing, eye tracking, all that's in here. No issues at all with that, but it is something that you need to take note of. Now, this can also be updated with firmware through the camera. So if Tamron does come up with a firmware update, which I'm sure they will over time, to update these lenses to work with more bodies and to make, uh, make them uh, perform better, then you'll be good to go on that. For you vloggers out there, videographers, gimbal users out there, you're going to love this 35. Again, keeps the weight down. You can use a smaller gimbal. Your rig is smaller and you're gonna get great optical quality on video and on photography. I'm at a crossroads. Ah. So now let's talk about a couple questions I have on these lenses. Why did Tamron decide to come out with a prime at f2.8? Now I know that seems to be a trend I'm seeing nowadays from other lens manufacturers, but I would have appreciated an f2. The reason being it's a prime. F2.8 I get for a zoom because to make an F2 zoom means it's got to be a very heavy lens. In the case you notice the uh, Canon RF 28-70 F2, it's a massive lens. 2.8 comes in smaller. But a prime at F2.8 perplexes me a little bit. And I did notice that in lower light situations that's where the struggles. Now the ISO capabilities on the Sony Alpha series are great. They're renowned. Everybody talks about how good it is in low light. But no matter how good your ISO is, it always performs better when you have a faster lens paired to the camera. That means you don't have to crank up the ISO so much, not so much grain in your images, not so much post-processing. And that's where I feel Tamron could have done a little bit more with these lenses, brought them in an NF2, then you give somebody a great prime at a fraction of the cost, something that Sony doesn't have out there. And a lot of people jump on this even more, especially videographers, even photographers out there. F2.8, lower light indoor shooting weddings. You're gonna have to crank the ISO up a little bit. Not a lot, but it's gonna make a difference. So do keep that in mind. Now talking about sharpness on this lens, I do wanna make a note of this, that if you're gonna be shooting at F2.8, this lens is not that sharp at F2.8. But when you stop down 5.6, F7, F8, that's when you see this lens come alive. As you can tell by the photos here, I mean, the flag is sharp, the architecture is sharp, the buildings are sharp. That, this lens paired at F7, F8 with the Sony A7R4, that's when the magic happens with this. At F2.8, a bit soft. F7, F8, look out. Oh, f it, I'll fix it in Lightroom. <laughs> I'll fix it in Lightroom. When in doubt, fix that shit in Lightroom. Straighten it. All right, so to wrap this up, this lens performs relatively well. It's sharp when you stop down. Got a large ass bus, duck tour. See, in Singapore, we got duck tours. Show this, Kyle. Now, the question is why do they call it duck tours? I don't know. Anyway. Back to the camera lens. This lens performs beautifully stopped down. Lightweight, autofocusing not as fast as a native uh, Sony lens, can be fixed with a firmware update. But for the price, guys, you really can't fault Tamron at all for these lenses. Both of them perform really, really well for what you're paying for. And for a lot of you out there, well, I might want an F2, an F2.8 might be the perfect lens for you. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, hit me up on Instagram. Until the next one, take care.